make of that. Uh, Jonathan, we'll start with you as a former detective as well. What do you think? Do you think this is the future of, of uh, solving crime? I, I think the fact that law enforcement is coming into the 21st century, the more the better. And it's not just the West Midlands, there's 10 forces that are currently using this. And these are the 10 largest forces in the UK already getting good success. And any uh, force that's going to use it will know that if they want to identify individuals out there or get a message across, whether to identify, locate or even assist in prosecution, this is a good software and app to use. There's got to be a flip side of that though, um, but we'll ask Sassy Baines about that. It saves money, it solves crime, so what is the downside of this? Potentially misuse of the system. You've got a system that will actually make things better, we hope, and on paper and track record suggests that it does. If somebody gets access to the platform that they shouldn't have access, that's one issue. The other issue that we could have is potentially vigilantism, where you have individuals who have the free app and they decide to chase a suspect and they try and do a kangaroo court type of activity. So that's the fear for myself, is somebody who actually thinks, oh great, I'll see that person, I'll go get them. So this is the problem if you have, say, shopkeepers, small business owners, and potentially if they've got a grudge against someone as well, they could then be sort of manipulating the system for their own benefit. And, and a lot of this comes down to who is actually vetting the information, who's producing the reports, and how those reports have been put to the police for evidential purposes. So it is really, from my point of view, a great system. It's a great idea. I love the fact that the police are getting it. As Jonathan says, the issues that I have with it are really in terms of the usability and people using it for nefarious purposes. Jonathan, what do you make of this rogues gallery, people being able to, members of the public being able to go online and then see this lineup of people who are still suspects and effectively they're, you know, not innocent until proven guilty at this point, that people are potentially recognising them and then criminalising them yeah. straight away? That's another part of it, because obviously that's the, 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 the app that we can add on. And I looked at mine this morning, put my postcode in and to see who's there. But we've been doing that for years. There's been wanted posters going up and we've been using it. And we went from things like photo fits to e-fits and now we're actually using live electronic data and photographs of individuals. Social media is being used by local communities people not involved in any technology or police forces and they're putting out did you see this car for argument's sake parked in a, a, a parent and toddler bay this social media is being used like that so the, i don't see a problem here that, that whether it's going to be vigilante i don't think that will happen this is quite a secure um site you know having spoken to them it's secured by design by the by the assistant of chief police officers so everybody is happy with this design at the moment so yeah, we, we've already um, had a rogues gallery, whether through law enforcement or now through social media. So this is just an extension of that and being used correctly. We've heard so much, haven't we, about police uh, cuts, cuts to their funding as well over the last couple of years. Uh, does this app then justify those police cuts and that police can still get on and do their job properly without the funding that they've claimed for so long is so necessary from central yeah, government? That, that, and that's a big issue. You know, we, the, the cuts that the police and many other organisations are facing that nobody wants but they're there. So anything that comes in to assist the police, and especially the police when it comes down to preventing and detecting crime, well, that is going to be of a huge benefit and they can then move on. And it will speed up prosecution because the evidence is there. It's live evidence in the sense of the picture's been taken, you've got that statement, the MG11, as you'll see on the site, it's all there so they can get on and actually then prosecute the individual. So yes, it will and does save time. Uh, Sati Baines, what's, what is the concern with more, more and more CCTV being in, in shops and in the public as well? Why is that such an infringement on our privacy, would you say? Well, take it like this. When you walk out your front door, you go to the shops, do you want to be watched on every step that you take on that journey? I know I don't. Most people don't either. Most people will not understand the regulations where they say, OK, we're approved by the Association of Chief of Police Officers. Your average consumer, average person, Joe Public, means nothing to them. So when they're saying, who's using it? How is my data being used? Those are questions we aren't literate enough to answer because it's hidden from us. And that's the problem I have with CCTV as a whole. It's a wonderful tool. This is a great example where technology actually improves the process that's been in existence for a long time. But the checks and the balances have to be in place in order for it to actually benefit us. But then, of course, many of us don't even know when CCTV cameras are in existence or when they're in a shop. So we're yeah. none the wiser. So why does it matter? I would look at it from the perspective of disclosure and transparency. I'm walking through a shop, I'm pretty sure at some point in the back of my head I'm being watched. And that's almost like a, an inane thought now that all of us carry around. Am I on camera today? 
if I'm in a, a shopping centre, I probably am on camera from every step of the way. I mean, the classic example of that is the Jill Dando case from years back when she went into the King's Mall in Hammersmith. They knew her tracks where she went the entire time. But what they didn't have was what actually happened at her doorstep. Now, you could argue in this day and age where we're all putting CCTV on our homes as well. Well, is that the next step then as That's well? I mean, we don't want to be filmed in public, but actually on our, on our own property, we're more than happy to put these cameras well, up. So, well, so maybe it should be spread out across and the board. That's another issue I have with this, in that we're actually moving from a culture where we see good in people and actually thinking the negative of everybody around us. Is that really where we want to go as a culture? Do you think, Jonathan, that the, the payoff is worth it? Less privacy, but better policing as a result? I, I don't think it's less privacy. It's the CCTV... It's here. Technology is here. We have even have cameras in the home now because we have computers and phones that we are forever filming ourselves to the extent that we've now got the next extension, I would see, of this, the fact that it now actually incorporates facial recognition. So these images can automatically be uploaded either to the police or to the local businesses and you'll be able to identify these individuals. This is for anti-social crime at the moment, something that we talk about a lot, that we really, what can be done to stop these individuals damaging cars, damaging property or having the fights in the street. This is just an extension of what I believe society does want. CCTV, that is here, and we have to use it and incorporate it far more to assist. In terms of the police and their activities as well, I'm not sure about the figures from West Midlands Police, for example, but whether this has just cut their workload or whether this has actually cut crime stats as well. Well, you, you have to look at both when you look at statistics. It's going to um, increase their workload because obviously they're going to get reports of crime they perhaps wouldn't normally get. So, but the, the workload is actually going to be a lot of the work that's actually been done for them. Then does it clear up crime? Well, yes, because every report they will then make will actually have a clear up because obviously it's got an outcome and it's got an arrest and most likely a prosecution. So the figures would be good, but of course this is exactly what we want. We want to make sure we can actually uh, deter as well as uh, and prevent and prosecute anti-social behaviour. And the next stage will be to move it on to even, uh, perhaps even more crime, uh, where we do with vehicles and vehicle registration recognition. With facial recognition, we can use it for all sorts of crime. Uh, Sati, it seems like you're not completely against the idea of the app, but you just think it needs a couple of tweaks still before, before it's uh, workable. Would that be well, fair? It's like any technology system. If technology system in place has to be controlled, has to be used in a correct manner. If you, if you get somebody who can subvert the process, and technology can always be subverted, we hear about this on the news every day. That's the issue that I have with all these things. It's all about control and adequate resources being applied to make sure that it actually does the job it says on the tin. I mean, it's a great idea. It's, it's Neighbourhood Watch Online. Okay. So, it's fantastic. And presumably might now be rolled out across the board then, across the UK. I think most forces will now see this, and yeah, I think it's a great bit of software, a, a great app, but most forces should sign up for this. Okay, Jonathan Taylor, Sati Baines, many thanks for speaking to us on Sky News. Thanks. <laughs>